Oh, <laughs> you surprised me. I didn't see you there. Hi, I'm so glad you could join me again in my home today. For those of you who don't remember me, my name is Drew, or Mr. McDonald if you prefer to call me that. You know, with all this extra time on my hands, I've been considering decorating a little bit in my apartment. I was thinking some curtains might look nice here. What do you think? Hmm. Except, I want to make sure I get the right size curtains. How tall do you think the curtains should be? Hmm. Do you have any suggestions? <gasps> I know. I could measure with a tape measure. Good thing I have one here. All right, let's see. It looks like from the top of the windowsill to the bottom is 58 inches. Hmm. Although, if I'm going to put curtains here, the curtain rod's actually going to be a few inches higher. And I'm probably going to want the curtains to hang a few inches lower as well. So instead of 58, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe 62 to 65, something like that? Hmm. I know there are 12 inches and a foot. I know that 12 times 5 is 60. So probably a little more than 5 feet. I think that would be reasonable. So, like I said, thank you so much for joining me again today. Today, we're going to be reviewing the ratios and rates topic in sixth grade math. This is topic five in your Envision workbook. And of course, we're going to have some of my best friends help us out. I've just been playing my favorite game, Dominion, with some of my absolute best friends. Those of you who joined me last time might remember them. This is Frida, this is Jeffrey the guinea pig, and this is Banana Gift. Whew. Jeffrey's hair sure has gotten long during this quarantine. Do you want a haircut, Jeffrey? I think I could help him out. Oh, that's better. That's the Jeffrey I know. We've been playing this game for a while now, and it's actually starting to get kind of hot outside. So we were thinking it might be nice to have some chocolate milk. I have a really good recipe that I like to use. Here, why don't you come into the kitchen and we'll look at it. The chocolate milk recipe that I like to use is on the side of the Hershey's cocoa container. Let's have a look at it. As you can see, the recipe says perfectly chocolate hot cocoa, but it actually works just as well for cold chocolate milk. The recipe calls for two tablespoons sugar, a dash of salt, two tablespoons of Hershey's cocoa, one cup of milk, and a fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oh, sometimes I love to make this chocolate milk for myself, but right now, Frida, Jeffrey, and Banana Gift all want some. I don't think that's going to be enough to make a recipe for all of us. What's that, Jeffrey? I can scale up the recipe? What do you mean? Oh, that's right. I can make an equivalent ratio table to find out how much I might need for four people. Why don't we go to my whiteboard and find out? Here, I've made an equivalent ratio table to show the recipe for chocolate milk, and I can use it to come up with the, how much I need to use for any number of people. Here, I've made an equivalent ratio table for the chocolate milk recipe. It shows the recipe, and it will help me find out how much of each ingredient I need to use to, to make chocolate milk for any number of people. Now, do you remember what a ratio is? Hmm. I know. Let's check the Envision workbook. I love that they have the glossary in here. It's really helpful. Let's have a look. A ratio is a relationship in which for every x units of one quantity, there are y units of another quantity. They even give an example. You can see there are four squares for every three circles. So you could say that the ratio of squares to circles is four to three. Let's see how that relates to this recipe. For example, you could say the ratio of cups of milk to tablespoons of cocoa is one to two. Or you might say for every cup of milk, there are two tablespoons of cocoa. Some people also use the word per. Like for example, you might say there are two tablespoons of sugar per cup of milk. Any one of those ways expresses a ratio. So let's have a look. The ratio in this recipe is one cup of milk to two tablespoons of cocoa to two tablespoons of sugar to one-fourth teaspoon of vanilla. 
There's also the dash of salt, but that's just such a small amount, I'm not gonna bother with it on the table. Now let's see. This should probably make enough for one person. I could probably drink about a cup of uh, hot chocolate, or chocolate milk, I should say. How could I figure out how much I need for two people? Hmm, do you have any ideas? I know, I could double the recipe. Let's see how it works. If I take every single one of these values and multiply it by two, that should give me enough ingredients for two people. So let's see, one times two is two. Two times two will be four. Two times two again, four again. And then a fourth times two. Hmm, if I have two fourths, that's gonna be the same as one half. So I would need half a teaspoon of vanilla. Well look, now we have the recipe for two people. But remember, I have three other friends, Frida, Jeffrey, and Banana Gift. So I'm gonna need more than just for two people. Let's see how much it would take for three people. How do you think I would work that out? Hmm. I know, instead of multiplying by two, I'll multiply by three or triple the recipe. Now, I know sometimes people multiply the number before by three. That's not something we should do though. We should always start with the original recipe and multiply that by three. You could also add on the original recipe, since this is for one person and that's for two. Either way works, but I'm going to multiply by three. One times three is three. Two times three is six. Two times three again, six again. One fourth times three, well, that'll be three fourths. So for three people, I would need three cups of milk, six tablespoons cocoa, six tablespoons of sugar, and three fourths teaspoons vanilla. I still need to work out for four people though. I think I know what to do at this point. I'm gonna take the original recipe and I'm gonna multiply it by four. One times four is four. Two times four is eight. Two times four again, is eight. One fourth times four. Hmm, if I have four fourths, what is that the same as? Four fourths should be the same as one. So that means I could just use one teaspoon of vanilla. How convenient. So here I've made equivalent ratios to the original ratio. We call them equivalent ratios because they express the same relationship between the quantities. So using four cups of milk for every eight tablespoons of cocoa will make the same recipe as one cup of milk for every two tablespoons of cocoa. It'll just make a lot more of it. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is that eight tablespoons of cocoa and eight tablespoons of sugar, that's a lot of measurements I'm gonna have to do of tablespoons. Do you have any ideas of how I might be able to make that a little bit easier so I'm not doing scoop after scoop after scoop of each ingredient? Jeffrey just had a really great idea about what I could do to not have to measure out so many tablespoons of cocoa and sugar. He suggested, what if instead of measuring in tablespoons, we measured in cups? But then I thought, hmm, I don't know how many tablespoons are in a cup, but I can look it up, so I did. Let's have a look. I found out that one U.S. cup is equal to 16 U.S. tablespoons. Hmm, let's write that down. One cup is equal to 16 tablespoons. If one cup is equal to 16 tablespoons, how many cups will be equal to eight tablespoons? What do you think? Hmm. What's that, Jeffrey? It's just divided by two. <gasps> I think Jeffrey's right. Let's have a look. 16 divided by two is eight. 
So to keep the equivalent ratio, I'm just going to divide by 2 here. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half cup. So I could measure out 8 tablespoons, but I could also measure out a half a cup. That might be a little easier for me so that I don't have to do so many scoops from the tablespoon. So this is how we make equivalent ratios. There are a couple of different ways. One thing we can do is we can take every value in the ratio and multiply it by the same number, like I did with the ratio table. So I did 1 times 2, 2 times 2, 2 times 2, a fourth times 2. It actually doesn't matter what number we multiply by as long as we multiply every part of the ratio by the same number. So for four people, one times four, two times four, two times four, a fourth times four. If I wanted to make chocolate milk for a hundred people, I could do one times a hundred, two times a hundred, two times a hundred, a fourth times a hundred. No matter what number I multiply by, I'll make an equivalent ratio. But we can also make equivalent ratios by dividing, like I did in this example. Here's a ratio, one cup equals 16 tablespoons. That's normally how you see it written, but we could write it like this as well. That's often how we see ratios written, with a colon. As long as I divide both parts of the ratio by two, I should end up with an equivalent ratio. One divided by two is a half, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So, 1 cup for every 16 tablespoons is the same ratio as a half cup for every 8 tablespoons. Wow, equivalent ratios sure do make making chocolate milk a lot easier. Well, now I have everything I need to make that chocolate milk. I've got the milk, the sugar, the cocoa, the vanilla, and I've got salt. Hey look, Jeffrey, it's your cousin Lenora. I've also got the measures that I need. Here, I've got a half cup measure for the cocoa and the sugar. I've got a teaspoon measure for the vanilla. Now, I do also have a cup measure for the milk, but conveniently enough, my blender here has a scale on it. So I'm just gonna fill it up to four cups. All right, so I'm gonna pour the milk all the way up to four cups. And then I'm going to grab my sugar. I'm going to pour it into the half cup measure. Now I'm going to add that to the milk. I'm going to do the exact same with the cocoa. And remember, this was the same as eight tablespoons, but it's just a lot easier if I can fill it up into this half cup measure. All right, there's my half cup of cocoa. Woo. <laughs> and now I'm gonna do my one teaspoon of vanilla. Finally, the recipe calls for one, the original recipe calls for one dash of salt. So I guess I need four dashes of salt. One, two, three, four. That might seem weird to you, but salt actually makes even sweet things taste better. All right, the moment of truth is upon us. Ooh, that looks so good. Oh, that's so refreshing and tasty. What do you all think of the chocolate milk? Ah, oh, thanks, Frida. I worked really hard on it. Ah, oh, thanks, Banana Gift. It was really important that we did that accurate math to make sure it turned out good. What's that, Jeffrey? Well, Jeffrey says he likes it, but he thinks that his chocolate milk recipe is even more chocolatey. Well, why do you think it's more chocolatey? Hmm, why don't we have a look at Jeffrey's recipe? So here I have my recipe and Jeffrey's recipe. Now I've only decided to focus on the milk and the cocoa because ultimately that's what's going to determine how chocolatey the chocolate milk is. 
So let's see. I use one cup of milk to every two tablespoons of cocoa. Jeffrey likes to make a little bit more chocolate milk for himself, so he always uses one and a half cups of milk to every four tablespoons of cocoa. Hmm. Now, this is a little hard to compare because on the one hand, Jeffrey's recipe does have more cocoa in it, but it also has more milk in it. So at the moment, it's a little hard to tell if it's actually more chocolatey. What do you think we could do to compare and find out whose recipe is more chocolatey? Hmm. Well, sure, we could make it, and trust me, I am in a minute. But let's see how the math checks out. I'm thinking that what we could do for both is make an equivalent ratio table. So let's start out by finding out how much milk and cocoa we would each need for two, three, or four people using our recipes. So let's see. For me, well, we already did this. It would be two to four times three would be three to six and then times four would be four to eight. Now let's look at Jeffrey's recipe. One and a half times two is going to be three. Four times two is gonna be eight. One and a half times three, four and a half. Uh, four times three, 12. One and a half times four, six. Four times four, 16. Hmm. How might we use the tables to determine whose chocolate milk is more chocolatey? Well, I see here, when I make my recipe for two people, I use four tablespoons of cocoa. And I can see that when Jeffrey makes his recipe for just one person, or one guinea pig, he uses four tablespoons of cocoa as well. So if we both use four tablespoons of cocoa, could we use that to determine whose chocolate milk is more chocolatey? Hmm. Well, I use two cups of milk for four cups, four tablespoons of cocoa, and he uses one and a half cups of milk for four tablespoons of cocoa. Do you think more milk or less milk for the same amount of cocoa will mean more chocolatey? Hmm. Well, I think it makes sense that less milk is gonna mean more chocolatey if both recipes have the same amount of cocoa. So this tells us that Jeffrey's recipe is more chocolatey. Huh, turns out you were right. You must have really well-developed taste buds. But you know, I just wanna double check and I see there's also a place in both of our tables where we both use three cups of milk. Hmm, let's see. When I use three cups of milk, I use six tablespoons of cocoa. When Jeffrey uses three cups of milk, he uses eight tablespoons of cocoa. So if we both use the same amount of milk, it would make sense that whoever uses more cocoa must have a more chocolatey recipe. Eight is more than six, so once again, this just confirms that Jeffrey's recipe is actually more chocolatey. The key point here is that if we're comparing two different ratios, we need to find a common part for both of them. Or sometimes this is called a common term, as numbers in a ratio are usually called terms. So here I found a common term of three cups of milk and then I could compare how much cocoa there was in each recipe. Or I could use the common term of four tablespoons of cocoa and then use the amount of milk to determine whose recipe is more chocolatey. Hmm. Either method works just as well as the other. They both brought us to that same conclusion. But like they say, the proof is in the pudding or in the chocolate milk. So let's make it and find out. Mmm. Ooh. You were right, Jeffrey, that is more chocolatey. Maybe actually a little too chocolatey for me, which is something I thought I would never say. But if it works for you, then that's great. You know, after making all this chocolate milk, now I'm pretty much out of cocoa, so I'm gonna need to buy some more. Let's go online and go shopping for cocoa. 
I'm gonna look online for some more cocoa, and I wanna get the best deal possible. I wanna try and save as much money as I can while still getting a good amount of cocoa. Here, I'm noticing this is the cocoa I normally buy. It's $4.19 for eight ounces. But I just noticed there's an even better deal over here. This one is $3.99 for eight ounces, which is also the same amount. Therefore, that must be cheaper. However, when we were looking at this, Jeffrey noticed something else. This cocoa is on sale, and it's $4.19 for 10 ounces. Do you think that's a better deal? You have to pay more, but you also get more cocoa. Hmm, let's go find out if that's actually a better deal. I'm gonna be determining the best value for money using unit price. Now, a unit price is the price per one item. It's a special type of unit rate, and this is also a ratio. So we can use the same methods that we used before to come up with the unit price by multiplying or dividing by the same value. So for example, the Simple Truth Cocoa is $3.99 for eight ounces. If I wanted to find out the unit price, I would need to work out how many, how much it costs for one ounce. I'm gonna use a double number line this time just to mix it up a little bit. It basically works in the same way as an equivalent ratio table. It's just a little easier to move up and down. For the Seiko Cocoa, I'm gonna work out the unit price as well by finding out how much it costs for one ounce. Once I know how much they both cost for one ounce, I can look at the lower price to figure out which is the best value for money. So let's have a look. Hmm. If I know how much eight ounces costs, what will I do to work out how much one ounce costs? I know, we'll divide by eight. When I divide $3.99 by eight, I get, oof, a really long decimal number. But you know what? I'm just gonna round it. So that'll be about 50 cents per ounce. I'm gonna do something similar with the Seiko Coco, but because it's in a 10 ounce container, I'm gonna need to divide by 10 to find out the unit price. Hmm, 10 divided by 10 is one. $4.19 divided by 10. Well, I know how to divide by 10 without a calculator. I just move all the digits down one place value. When I round that to the nearest cent, it should be 42 cents per ounce. So the simple truth cocoa is 50 cents per ounce, and the Seiko cocoa is 42 cents. Per ounce. Which do you think is the better deal? Well, I don't know about you, but I would prefer to spend less money for one ounce of cocoa, so I'm gonna go for this one. Now, let's be real. We don't always make decisions based on what's the best unit price. Sometimes there's a particular product or brand that we really like the most, but as far as I'm concerned, these two cocos are probably gonna be fine for me, so I'm gonna go for the one with the cheaper unit price. I wanna thank you so much for joining my friends and me today. We all had a really great time making chocolate milk, and now I've got some more cocoa so the next time I can make more. If you wanna do some more practice on ratios and rates, you can always look in your Envision workbook, volume two, in topic five. You might also be receiving a packet in the mail with some additional practice. I hope you continue to learn some math at home, and most importantly, I hope you continue to be healthy, happy, and take care of your loved ones. Bye, everyone.